Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Love Church. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for today. Forgive us of our sins, the things that we say, and the things that we don't do when we say we're going to do. Father, you love us. Teach us. Guide us. Discipline us. Help us change those bad behaviors, the patterns in our life of sinfulness, and walk in holiness and truth. Let our actions line up with the things that we say. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't normally rip right out of the gate on the people that I'm preaching to, but today is a serious sermon. One of the greatest sermons that you'll probably hear, and when I mean greatest, the greatest convicting sermon. This is something that God has been pressing in my heart, in my life. And I want you to hear it. I don't mean to offend anyone. I mean to convict with the truth. Because the truth will set you free. Let's get to it. The title of this sermon is called Walking in truth. We have the Old Testament. God has established a covenant with Abraham. The law. 635 laws for us to obey. Jesus arrives. They don't have to sacrifice animals anymore because Jesus sacrificed his only body that atoned for all sins. However, the law still stands. Jesus says, not an iota, iota of the law will pass away. And iota is a little cursive slang at the end of every letter. He says, not even that will pass away until all is fulfilled. Now, there's this huge misunderstanding about free grace. I can live my life however I want to because God forgives me. Yes, he does. But forgiveness came at a price, just like it came at a price at the Old Testament. It comes at a price today, and it came at a price when Jesus offered his body as a living sacrifice to atone for our sins. It wasn't cheap. I wouldn't want to go through that, what Jesus went through to be crucified. And for someone to take that for granted, that's not the gospel. That's not the Jesus that we serve. Forgiveness comes at a price. Grace comes at a price. God gave his only son for that. And I want to get down to the nitty gritty is what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is the sense of people saying, Oh, just forgive me. And I was doing that. I was doing that. And there's some truth in that, but that's not the whole picture. Just forgive me. You're just going to have to forgive me. I'm sorry. But it would not change their actions. Would not turn from their sins, change their behavior, correct it, and apply I'm not going to do that again. I mean, I'm sorry. That means I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to actually try to work on my behavior. Work on my actions. I'm going to actually live up to what I said. When I said I'm sorry, I meant it. But people are passing off sorry like, oh, I'm sorry. That's easy to say that. 
But to do it is an entirely different thing. They will know that you are Christians by the way you love each other. Love isn't just, you just overlook all the sins in the world. Because God doesn't overlook my sin. He wants me to turn from it and he wants me to do better and not go back to it. Whether it's my personal sin or whether I hurt my brother or my sister in or outside Christ. If my brother or my sister comes up to me and they say, this is what you did that hurts my feelings. Please don't do it again. And you say, I'm sorry. And you go right back and do it again. You did not repent of that. You didn't learn from your mistake. So now why should this person forgive you? And we do the same thing to God. We say, I'm sorry, but we go right back to the sin, right back to the behavior, right back to the way of living. That is not what Jesus died for. Jesus died for us to be set free from that sin and to stay away from it. It's better if you chop out your eye, the Bible says, than to offend your brother or your sister and do the same thing that you did that hurt their feelings. And how did I realize this? Over the course of my marriage, my wife has just been complaining to me. She says, you're sorry, you're sorry, you're sorry, but you never change your actions. And I would hear that a thousand times, just like a cliche. You hear it over and over and over again. You say, I know, I know, I know, but you would not change. And it finally hit me here, not just here anymore, because this goes in one ear, out the other. It hit me here. I said, God, why do we keep entering into these arguments and confrontations with each other? And he says, then change your actions. I didn't want to believe what she said about me was true. Neither did I want to change my actions. And I would use the same excuse. I'm sorry. Just forgive me. Until someone did that to me. Someone hurt my feelings. And I would go to them and I would confront them over and over and over again. And they would say, I don't know what I did. I guess you're just going to have to forgive me. I'm sorry, but go right back and hurt my feelings again. Go right back to the sin and do what, what offends me. Therefore, they have no value of me in my mind. And that's what my wife would say. I would say, I don't get it. She's just going to have to forgive me. And now I get it. And now I understand, oh, just like this person hurt my feelings and they don't get it. Now I get it. Honey, I'm sorry. I came to her today and I said, I'm sorry. You've told me a thousand times and I just, I just didn't want to accept it. I didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to change my behavior. But I'm going to try now because I, I now know that it means a lot to you because I was doing this over and over and over again. It was hurting your feelings. And I'm going to try, actually apply it. And I've had a lot of people do this to me. I would confront them with their sin that offends me. And they would say, you're just going to have to forgive me. I'm sorry and turn right around and do it over again. How many of us, we make promises to people, we don't do it. When someone makes me a promise and they say, I'll meet you on this day and we will do this together and come that day and I've got my hopes up and I'm ready like a little kid, like ready to hang out with this guy or or whomever. And they turn right around and say, sorry, something more important came up. I've been waiting for a week or two weeks or a month for this appointment to happen. You turn right around and say no. Or sometimes some of us don't even say anything. Then we see each other in public. I don't know what I did wrong. You remember when you promised me something that you, you never did? Isn't it funny that we never remember when we hurt people? 
But we always remember when they hurt us. The things when people that you that hurt you. Remember, this is what God is teaching you. God is teaching you, whether you believe or not, that the things that hurt you the most is the things that you're doing to others. That's how he teaches us because we're so knuckleheaded because our heart is so hard. We don't want to listen. I heard someone say this. They said, he didn't want to listen to me. Everything, he can't be wrong. He never wants to be wrong. He never wants to listen. And I looked at that person saying that and I go, wow. You're encountering yourself through another person. You don't want to listen. You don't want to apply. You think everything is about yourself. Now you know how it feels. God doesn't need to use a particular person that's been trying to teach you this for a long time because he's been trying to teach you this for a long time. He'll use every other person, believer or not person, to get you to the truth about what you're doing about who you are. You keep complaining about these people. Maybe it's because that's what you're doing. It's always the things that we hate the most. That is the things that we're doing. This convicted me, what my wife said. And I realized I finally had a light bulb go off in my head. Well, oh, that's how I've been treating you the whole time. Because this other person is treating me this way. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I'm actually going to apply it. Not just say it. It's not just free grace. What are the pains and sufferings that you're going through today? I guarantee most of them are the things that you did to other people. And they're coming right back at you. Everyone's judging me. It's because you're judging everybody else. No one's forgiving me. It's because you're not forgiving people. People are hurting me in this way. It's because you're hurting people in that way. And if you stop for a moment and you look at yourself and you think about everything that you do, you'll start to realize you're not as perfect as you think you are. You'll start to see the imperfections in you that are the imperfections in others. Other people are other people. Sometimes they're just wrong. Rarely is that true. We always have to analyze our own hearts and motives and intentions first before we look at someone else and cast stones at them. Stones of judgment, just in case you don't know what that meant. But God is merciful and God is loving. He will forgive you if you repent. Jesus is very adamant about his word. Many will say to me on the last day, Lord, did we do this? Did we do that? He said, you did not do the most important thing that I wanted you to do. Love God and love your neighbor. Old Testament in Solomon's writings and Proverbs, he talks about it. He basically says this. It is more valuable for you to be a poor person than to be a rich liar. To live with integrity and morals than to be the greatest philosopher who lives immorally. To be the richest person who has no moral compass. Jesus says it. Before you go to work and serve people, before you do any of your good deeds, before you make sure that 
everything's okay with this and that and all your possessions. Be, before you do any of that, be reconciled with someone that you have something against. Love God, love people. Those are the greatest commandments. Jesus says they fulfill all the laws and the prophets. Love God and love people. He says it's better for you to be a poor man, woman, homeless, living on the streets and have love for one another. Eating scraps. Than to be someone who's of great wealth. And has taken care of their kids and, and have and have all the degrees that you ever want. All the doctrines and masters and everything that you've ever wanted. All the wisdom in the world. All the status. And thus the difference between the values of God and the values of man. The values of God is saying love is the most important thing ever. Love God, love people. Leave your gift at the altar and make sure that is at their highest priority because those are the things that I care about. Then to exalt your job, your house, your clothes, your possessions, your car, your this, your that, that's what man thinks is of high value. But my value is in loving people. Love God, love people. Many people will show up to the Lord on the last day when they die from this world and they will confront him. And he will say, you did everything right. Except the two things that I asked you to do. If you knew me, you would have loved me. And that would be expressed in the way that you love people. I'd rather have you been poor and have barely enough. And to love people. Than to have loved all these things in the world. We wonder why the church is dying. I meet people who have a profession where it requires them to serve people and put others first. People in all departments, military, all these. And the first thing that they talk about is how much badges on their uniform they have. The first thing they talk about is all their accomplishments. Man's heart. This is the man's heart. This is what God is saying. This is man's heart. And I have nothing to do with that. He cares about his accomplishments more than he cares about his neighbor. He cares about what he's done for today or what he has more than he cares about his kids. This is not my heart. This is sinful. This is man's heart. My heart is to love each other. I love you, I love my kids, and I love my neighbor. That is the top of my priority every day. That's my will. But man's heart is in his possessions, in his status, in what he has. And you walk around and boast putting others down by what their value is, by what they have, than by who they are. You wonder why the church is dying? Because people are vanity, selfishness, always focusing and thinking about themselves. I am the Lord. I always think about other people first. I never think about myself. That is the difference. That's who Jesus is. That's who Jesus was. Jesus always put others first. He always thought about others more than he thought about himself. 
people always think about themselves more than they think about others. And if they think about others, they put each other down, whether it's in their thoughts or their actions. What is the first thing that you do every morning? You wake up thinking about yourself. God says, I wake up thinking about you. How do I wake up every day and think about how to serve you, how to love you, how to help you take off your burdens? I never think about myself and I never pray about myself. I always pray about you. This is the church. You wonder where the church is? You're trying to take out God and you're trying to turn the church into the world. I'm not of the world. You wonder why there's no love. We have professions in this world that causes us to lay our life down and people are boasting in their accomplishment about their profession. Our values are all backwards, all upside down. You want my respect? The Lord says, you want to see who I am? Change your values. Change what you hold dearly. Love each other as I've loved you. Forgive each other. It starts with the church. Why should they come to the church when we're not being the church? Lay down your idols and love each other. Put each other first. Look out for each other's best interest. First, above your own, don't ever think about yourself. And I will show you the fear of the Lord, the love, the peace, the justice. Walk in obedience to the Word of God and not just words on a piece of paper for you to look at every day, for you to go to church every day. For application, you call me Lord, 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 but you do not do what I command. Therefore, on the last day, I would say, I don't know you. And the greatest things that I command is to love me. And when you love me, you will love others first above yourself. You will never think about yourself. Humble yourself. And I will show you the truth. And the truth will set you free. God is calling us to do what he commands. If you do what I command, then you fear me. Then you love me, the Lord says. But if you do not do what I command, discipline yourself, just like you discipline yourself every morning to brush your teeth, put on your clothes, to get a cup of coffee, discipline yourself in the word of God. Pray for your enemies. Bless those who persecute you and say all mean and evil things against you. Then you will be the children of heaven. Then I will call you my own. Do it by faith. I believe. Therefore, I do what I believe. I love my enemies because I am commanded to. And I don't do it because I'm told to. I believe it.
Do you believe it enough to do it? Or is it just words on a piece of paper? Something to do. Something to look at. You want to know God's heart? You want to see the church move? You move. You do. Even when no one else does. You want to be a leader? You lead. Even when no one else is following, you keep going. broke my heart the Lord just showed me just broke my heart there's a lot of theologians in this world lots of us right lots of us we go to school we we read everything about the Bible we do all this stuff thinking that God God hears us God recognizes us God approves us and he says, you don't do my word. <laughs> you do everything else. But you don't do what my word says. I just realized how much pain I was causing my spouse. And she would just be crying to me. And I just couldn't, wouldn't listen to her. She just cry and cry and cry. Now I know how that feels. Crying to someone who wouldn't, who wouldn't change their behavior. Whether they were going in a direction or doing something that was hurting themselves or doing something that was hurting others or hurting me, pleading. just can't hear you because they're always thinking about themselves and I know that because I was doing that the world wake up church the world is crying the world is hurting we're so focused on ourselves we can't hear them we're always thinking about ourselves. We can't hear the people in the world crying. When our kids cry, I don't want them to cry. I do anything to stop letting them cry. That burden that comes down on me. I want to hear the voice of my town. I want to hear the voice of Battle Mountain. And all I hear is crying. Just like when my kids cry. And I want to calm them down and I want to comfort them. And the church can't hear people crying. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Because they're so busy looking at themselves in the mirror. Look at me! Look at me! And Jesus shows me this. 
vanity, selfishness. Me, me, me. Every time I cry to the Lord, he comes to me. Like a father. He calms me. He helps me. He loves me. He rescues me. And now I can hear. And now I can see. And all I want to do is help. Take off the burdens. I started in my house. My wife has been the happiest I've ever seen her. Before it was just she was complaining and all this stuff and I couldn't hear her, I wouldn't listen. And the Lord would correct me and guide me and direct me and now she's just a rainbow, just so joyful. I take all those burdens off of her. Jesus, Jesus took it off of me. And my kids are happier and just, I'm happier. And I just want to give that to the world. I want to give the love that he showed me that I could give to my wife and my kids. And now I want to give it to the world. Is everyone so selfish? And I've lived there. And I've been there. I don't want to be there no more. I don't want to be that person no more. I want you to experience that. I see your struggles. I see your pain. I see your sorrows. I see it. I don't want you to carry any of it. I want you to be free like children, being joyful. That's what the church should be. That's what the church is, the real ones. always extending like the Lord's hands and his feet his word lining up their actions with what they're doing you can go to all the theological schools you want and still not understand right here the Lord wants to use these and this his feet that's so we could just sit there and talk all day. Oh, so we can do. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for today. Forgive us for just talking and not doing. You love us. You want us. You want to be our father, our healer, our redeemer, and our teacher who encourages us and who pushes us into faith. Jesus was quick to listen and slow to speak. We're quick to speak and slow to listen. Father, everything that we are in our nature of sin, we pray that you would reverse it. We pray for the church Every Bible believe me, church, the same thing. Let's not do things to be seen by others, but we do things to be seen by you. You want us, you love us, forgive us, guide us. In Jesus' name who shows us how to live.